Hey, how you doing? Uh, it's Mike, and uh, I was going to make a new video today on making some whistles. I made some uh, whistles recently out of deer antler and some different exotic woods I bought uh, at the local lumber company. There's uh, some purple heart. I got some zebra wood. I bought some ebony. Maple. I already had maple. Um, and this one's called uh, Bacote, I think. It's B-O-C-O-T-E. It's a really hard dark wood. This one is, uh, this one is, I don't remember. Oh, uh, Murillo, I think. It's Murillo wood. It's real pretty. It's got some nice grain. And then uh, I think I got another one somewhere. But anyhow, but what I did is I made this whistle recently out of an antler. And uh, this one is called uh, Whistling Moon. I'm actually selling it on Etsy, but... Um, Put the uh, Murillo through it, I think it's Murillo wood here, and a band here, and then carved uh, a face and some stars and moons. And then I put a stainless steel, oh, this one's actually got a brass uh, tube going through it and a stainless steel reed. <clears throat> and I just made this one yesterday, I think this one's got the uh, Murillo wood, you can see how the grain is here in the middle. And then it's got maple on either side, purple heart at the top and uh, a piece of the dark wood. It has a 3 8 inch brass rod and a stainless steel reed. And, uh, and then I carved a little face on the end of it. It's actually called uh, the Screaming Clown. Screaming Clown, but it's not that loud. Anyway, there's other ones that I've done <clears throat> for kids. And I'm just going to show today how to make them real quick. Uh, these ones are on lanyards and different colored woods. This one's got ebony. That was loud. Uh, <clears throat> so you can make it for the kids. Those are all out of antler and different colored woods. And then this one is one I made yesterday. That's out of a real old antler, so you can see how it has the grain the, and the uh, it's white. This one's kind of deep. So anyway. What I did is I kind of prepared some stuff. I got a, uh, for this one's going to be 930 seconds brass tubing and a, uh, just as small as a quarter inch, which fits in the center, quarter inch stainless steel rod. And I'm going to eventually cut a piece of this and a small piece, sand this down and turn this into a reed. And this piece is going to go down inside the antler. I've prepared already some purple heart wood that I cut 930 second hole through it and sanded it down uh, and that's and then also a piece of the antique mesquite wood which is that dark brown wood to go on it so eventually it'll slide on the tube and then slide on the horn and the whole deal and then I'll epoxy it all together after I drill it out and then I was gonna make this one into uh, this one into a whistle I cut this off of an antler and uh, Started. I drilled it out. The hole is actually 930 seconds, but I'm going to ream it out a little bit more so that the rod slides onto it like that. See, it slides all the way down inside. It should go down to about in here, maybe about two and a half inches or two inches. And now I'm going to take it on a bandsaw and I'm going to cut it in sections and I'll slide it onto the rod, sand it down and even up my ends so everything matches up and I'll slide these into the sections. And then on the end piece, I'm going to put uh, this antique mesquite. And then after everything is glued, which glues pretty fast, then I'll sand it down on the uh, belt sander. And then I'll show you kind of what I had before I use some uh, uh, files, sandpaper, and then put it on the, uh, the buffing wheel. So I'll be back. I'm going to go ahead and cut these sections, and then I'll show you what, I, what I've done and how I'm going to slide it together. So I'll be back uh, shortly. Hey guys, uh, I'm back and it took me about 10 minutes or so and what I ended up doing was is I cut the antler and this obviously is an old one again you can see the different color it's uh, bleached with the sun it's just an old antler kind of rusty spots here and stuff anyway I, I cut it with a bandsaw and then I added these pieces of purple heart and this last piece down here of this antique mesquite where the reed's gonna go it's not glued together you can see where this goes into here and all the other pieces are cut at that uh, that size and now I'm going to go ahead and epoxy everything together and just let it set it should harden up at least in about 10 minutes for me enough to start sanding this down and make it to straight to where I'm going to 
notch in for where the uh, the reed will fit up to for the uh, the channel. So, okay. And uh, sorry I didn't show you how I'm doing it, but I'm just telling you it takes too long and the video would go too long. So, again, it's uh, cut on the bandsaw in sections, and then I add these pieces, which I bored out the same size as my tube, and then I go ahead and uh, epoxy everything together. And then I'll show you, I'll be back here shortly on uh, what it looks like after it's uh, epoxied and then sanded down. So uh, I'll be back with you in a few minutes. Okay, uh, I went ahead and did the epoxy on here. And it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see the dark lines. Um, I would be generous with the epoxy. And I put it on the tube before I pushed it down inside and then each piece. So, I mean, this thing's going to be solid as a rock when it's done. But uh, what I'll end up doing is in about 15 minutes after it's dry, I'll take it on the bandsaw, knock off the high parts of the wood so I don't have to sand so much or grind so much, and then I'll dremel it with the bone to try, or with the antler to try to get it kind of, you know, in a line, but still leaving a lot of the natural detail in the antler. I'll grind this off, sand that down, and then start sanding on it and figure out how far I want my reed to go. The deeper the hole, the deeper the pitch, or the the lower the pitch of the uh, the whistle, the shorter the hole, or the smaller, the higher the pitch. So uh, it should look pretty good when it's done. So um, anyway, what I'll do is I'll show you a couple things while that's drying. Is uh, again I use the Dremel tool, the 4000, and uh, for doing this you'd need if you didn't have any power tools, you need a handsaw. Um, you can also use just a. Uh, um, you can use a wood hand saw, you can use a uh, hacksaw. You're going to need a hacksaw anyway for cutting the pipe. And it also cuts through the stainless steel. And I use just a basic hand saw, and I also use a coping saw. Um, where is it? Right here, this coping saw. And then the hacksaw blades that I use are these ones from Home Depot. And they're the, you guys can't really see it, but they're the Buck Brothers hacksaw blades. But you check them and they'll say whether you're going to cut. If you're going to use stainless steel. And then I'll use this for cutting certain pieces of uh, antler or bone so I can get around on coping saw. Um, <clears throat> I use a lot of different kinds of uh, pipes I got at the local hobby shop. If I want to add uh, brass in between the antler, I cut a little piece, drill out the same size hole and slide it on just like I did the wood. Same thing with stainless steel. And then uh, I've got aluminum rods. Aluminum rods, you can actually bend and keep your antler the same uh, angle and design that you want if you're going to make something else. If you want to keep the antler kind of going in natural form, but you want something solid inside while you're putting in the bands of wood, then uh, you want to use the aluminum or copper because you can bend and then epoxy it down inside. The uh, epoxy that I've been using is again from the hardware store, or uh, I think it's from the hobby shop. Uh, ours is from DNJ Hobby, but it's just the uh, quick epoxy, quick cure to mix uh, epoxy. And um, it seems to work really good, real fast for me on these projects. And there isn't any smell after it's dry. Uh, <clears throat> I did find that these larger ones, like this one where I put this little guy's face on it, uh, that's that button on the end which has the, the whitest uh, antler for carving into. And then uh, I found that the larger reeds, this one being 3 8 definitely gives you the, the deepest pitch so that the kids won't drive you nuts. Although it does go high. Kind of like a bird, so that's kind of cool. And then the other one does the same thing, this one. So anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, let that uh, let that dry. I'm going to go ahead and file it down and bring it back to you and then show you as I notch in uh, and then cut in for the reed, and then we should be done. Okay, so that's a pretty quick whistle. You can do the same thing with wood. You can do the same thing with anything, I guess, anything solid that you can drill out. Uh, but again, without power, without any major power tools like my bandsaw and. Uh, my belt sander, I've got a, la a lathe and then also a um, planer. And then I use a drill press with a buffing wheel on it to actually buff it out when I'm done. Um, you basically need the hand saw, the hack saw. Uh, you need a drill, the drill bits and different size tubes, either in stainless steel or brass. And then different size rods that slide perfectly inside 
those whether they're stainless steel and brass and then epoxy files sandpaper and all the way up to a real really fine 600 to 800 grit sandpaper or fine steel wool with that if you don't have a buffing wheel and you'll be able to have the, uh, the whistle looking real nice so I'll be back after I go ahead and sand this thing down all right guys I've been uh, I've been sanding on this uh, sorry I've been sanding on this piece so now you can see uh, it's got the end here and I got to clean it up and it's still kind of in a rough form but you can see how it's turning into a uh, whistle and then um, sorry with the lights a little bright here but this piece here I'll probably sand this down a little bit more and not have such a high spot on it and then you can see this goes in here that far that's actually pretty far it's two and a half inches so I have to decide what's going to be the top and the bottom. I guess this will be probably the top. So I'm going to end up cutting down into here, right about in this top spot, and notching it and going down into the tube. I think that'll be the top, although this might be the top. I'm not sure. Anyway, i got to sand it, and then I file it uh, with this, uh, like, jeweler's files, little tiny files to get the most of the marks off, the little tiny files. Then I'll buff it, and then I'll uh, cut it, and I'll show you... How I'm going to cut it before I cut it out, I'll notch it and then uh, go from there. All right, uh, I went and took that little bump off of it that was hanging down here. I kind of didn't like that. So now uh, the best thing to do when you're doing this is make sure you clean out the tube. So slide the rod that's going to be the reed and the end down inside and kind of grind it out to make sure it's. It's already kind of a whistle. To make sure it's cleaned out of there and now I'm gonna set up uh, I'm doing this from a laptop I haven't bought a camera yet but I'll buy one so I'm gonna set this up to show you how I'm gonna notch uh, for where the reeds gonna go and then I'll turn it back on and show you guys that okay so uh, stand by okay I kind of set this up on an angle so you can see here what I ended up doing is I marked uh, back from the end I know that the reed sits back I mean the, the tube sits back two and a quarter so I came back uh, just about three quarters of an inch from the edge and I'm pitted parallel to the end. I take the coping saw and start it here. And I just do it by hand. Try to keep it straight. Until you hit the pipe, you'll hear the pipe, uh, uh, the metal. I'm on the metal then I come and I think I wanted to have some of the purple show anyway so I'm going to start at that line and I'm going to come on an angle uh, actually I'll start in the middle see how it goes here and then come on an angle bring it down to it don't slip and hit your finger because uh, you'll end your fun you won't want to do this anymore for a while. So I'm right about to the end. Then I take the hacksaw and do the same thing. Take that piece out. You got that little piece of brass that I'm trying to cut the reed or where the reed's going to go on the, the, the piping. take a file and clean it up I kind of 
like how the purple looks in there. Get that edge up. I'll take some sandpaper and I'll deal with that. So, that ends up being how you do the, the notch. And, uh, and then I'll end up showing you how to put a reed in. So, uh, stand by to stand by. All right, guys, so what I do on the rod, this rod is a quarter inch. As you can see, the edge of it, how it's angled right on the end right there. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see. See right there how it's angled? I sand it on a belt sander, and then I'll take a hacksaw, and I'll hack it off at the right uh, distance. Okay, well, that's the whistle. That took me about, you know, almost an hour to do from scratch. You can see how the reed now is in the back and the stainless steel with brass. And it's a little whistle with the purple heart wood and the mesquite, uh, like antique mesquite, on the end. <whistles> and you can hang it. You can do whatever. So, anyway, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave me a message. And also, I have these on Etsy.com under M. Robertson 68. And this one will probably be on there tonight for uh, 25 bucks. So, anyway, if you guys have any questions about how to make this stuff, let me know. Okay? Talk to you later.